I'll call to order and uh, welcome everyone to this uh, budget meeting this evening. And I will call for the approval of agenda, special committee of the whole agenda, December 8, 2020, the recommended action that the special committee of the whole agenda for December 8, 2020 be approved as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Steinemann, Councillor the Rose, all in favor? Carrie, declaration of pecuniary interest. If anyone so has, so do it now or at the appropriate time. We move on to four, which is section D, finance and corporate services. A, matters for consideration. Draft number four, 2021 budget report. And the recommended action is that the draft four, 2021 budget report and related budget documents be received for information and discussion and that staff amend the budget as directed. The mover and a seconder. Councillor Mayotte and Councillor Wadebonker, all in favor. Thank you, that is carried. And so we are at anyone who may have uh, questions, concerns, uh, amended changes, uh, and if we have questions of our treasurer, uh, now is the time. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Deputy Mayor. Yes, um, Your Worship, I just got into the meeting. So uh, could you just give me a brief outline of what just happened? Well, we're at the recommended action that the draft for 2021 budget report and related budget documents be received for information and discussion and that staff amend the budget as directed. So I have asked if there are any members of council who wish to uh, address the, this treasurer or questions or concerns with the budget or any changes in the budget. Anyone? Councillor LaRose. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, there was a few things that uh, I wanted uh, Council to have a look at that we were presented with last time. Uh, the first one was that Sistema Music Grant. Uh, when I looked around, I couldn't find any information really about them except on their website. Uh, we've never heard anything about them. They've never made a presentation to us. I'm not even sure if it fits our criteria to get here. So uh, at this point, I would uh, be looking forward to have that one removed from the budget. Okay. Um, does anyone have any information on the Sistema Music Grant or who they are, what they do? Uh, and Treasurer Carey. Carey, do you there? Just, yeah, just to follow up um, uh, related to their request, um, I did speak to um, the director um, related to how many Penetanguishing students she may have, and, and they are you know, music students that they have been teaching online, um, virtually, I guess. Um, so she did say that, um, that she had, I believe it was uh, six, six to eight students, about 25 to 30 students in total. <laughs> So, I, so I, I was just eight. trying to confirm that they did have some penetang machine. Okay. Quest for that one, Terry. Okay, and, and, and you're saying that there are six to eight out of 25 from Penetangle Sheen. Yeah. Councillor Levy, you have your card up there for the request to speak. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think it's a very worthwhile program, but uh, for online music classes, 
Uh, those can be found just about anywhere. The beauty of uh, this particular program is they provide transportation, they provide um, instruments and instruction, but during these online days, I'm not sure that $1,000 for an online music program for one child is uh, really uh, money well spent. So I would support Councillor Ro Rose in turning this down. Thank you. Councillor Sanema. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the, the only thing I would like to add is that um, they, this is, this is the first time that they've made a request to us for any assistance. Um, the program has been in operation for, I believe, about four or five years. Um, and they do what they do is they serve they serve students that are probably not in a financial position to be able to take um, music lessons in in any other um, in any other regard. Yes, it is online right now, but they've had to adapt because of COVID the way other people have as well. Um, it is a very small portion of their budget. And I personally think it would be something that would be, it is, it is definitely a worthwhile program. Okay. So that's just my take on it. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Council Mayotte. Thank you, Your Worship. I think the first thing I would like to know that they meet the criteria for um, for us giving them money. Um, and I support uh, Councillor Rose and Councillor Levy. Like, I, I've never heard of this group. I don't know who they are. Um, the first time they got the money, do they do any fundraising at all to help them out? And second of all, like the child, is, it a, is this a child abroad or is this a child like, like one of our, one of, a, one, one of the kids from Penetanguishing? If it's from other municipality, why are we supporting other kids from the other municipality? So, but the biggest question is, does it meet our criteria? That's what I would like to know. Okay, to, to begin with, uh, <clears throat> Council Mayette, I understood from our treasurer that uh, of a group of 25, it's not one individual child. Uh, there are six to eight from Penetanguishine in that group. Is that correct, uh, Madam Treasurer? Yes, that's correct. And I, I did try to clarify if it was, you know, $1,000 for one child. And it is just a contribution towards their budget to put on their program for all the children, um, of which there's, you know, um, Penetanguishene uh, children. Yeah. And in terms of the criteria, so it does not meet the uh, Council's Community Capital Grant Program criteria that's in a policy. Um, however, you know, I've been directed to bring forward every request, regardless of whether it, um, it meets that specific criteria for Council consideration, which is why I recommended, obviously, the Council Contingency Fund and not the Community Capital Grant Program. Okay. Anyone else have any further discussion or concern with this one? Uh, Councillor Tu. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I fully support this request. I think we are very good at funding sports programs. We do an excellent job of that, but there are many uh, students, many children in our community that are not into sports, and this is just one of those many activities that we can offer. And um, they do actually, I do know about this, um, this organization. They do typically have two fundraisers a year. They haven't been able to do it this year. And I think their request is very moderate and I'd like, a, like to see us support it. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. I too think this is a very worthwhile cause and I would uh, support that we keep it in the budget. Okay. Um, now, knowing the facts that I know that it's been around for some period of time, as uh, Councillor Clue has pointed out there, they do fundraisers and they are unable, and that's probably why they're reaching out to us for a thousand dollars, which is for the entire program. It's not for one child. Uh, I myself think that overall, it probably is a good program and, and it's for 
children in need that uh, can't afford it. And so um, I think uh, that what I will do is I will just call a vote of council as to whether yes or no, we keep it in the budget. So all those in favor of keeping it in the budget, yes or no. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that carries. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, Your Worship. So the vote was to keep it in the budget? Yes, that's correct. So, okay. So normally um, it's already included in the budget. So based on Council of the Roses, um, Council of the Roses made a motion to remove it from the budget. Councillor Levy supported that removing from the budget. So it would have, I, I just wanted to make sure that it's minuted correctly um, because the reason it was brought up was to remove it. Um, and that was that was it was what I think Councillor La Rose's intention was. But as long as council as long as council agrees, I can sort of minute it accordingly. But I, I think that the, well, that the motion we we, we can go the other way and have it as a motion from Councillor La Rose, seconded by Councillor Levy, that it be removed and take the vote on that. So all those in favor of removing it. That's that. Sorry, that's kind of where I was at. Councilor so Levy. I don't know if you want to let Councillor Levy speak or just call for that vote. Um, I can minute accordingly. I guess uh, before I go there, I see that Councillor Levy has a request to speak. Councillor Levy, you're on. on you're on. on. Councillor Levy, you're on mute. Okay. Okay. I did not second that motion, and I initially supported Councillor Rose, but. After what uh, Councillor Clue said, I changed my mind. So there you go. So, okay, thank all you. Right. <laughs> so, so now, now there is, uh, uh, Councillor Rose, are you putting a motion forward that we, we remove it? And do we have a seconder? Councillor Maya. So, Councillor Rose uh, is moving that we remove it. Councillor Maya is seconding it. Now, all those in favor of removing it. In favor of removing? Just, and those in favor of retaining it then? Yes. Those opposed, opposed to them. Opposed. opposed. Opposed, opposed. Okay, those opposed. I have to get that red card. <laughs> so, uh, Councillor Little Rose's motion is defeated. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. What a what a go around it. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, now, is there anything more uh, that uh, anyone wishes to bring forward, Councillor Buddy Moncara? Thank you, Your Worship. Just a, a question with respect to the contract positions that are, are being proposed. I, uh, I certainly support the contract positions, the two that are, are being proposed in the, in the budget. Actually, they're existing, but we're just adding hours to them, but they're going to remain as contract. I'm just wondering about the process to review these positions um, going forward. Um, they, you know, the, the two department, or sorry, the department heads made uh, very good arguments with respect to why these uh, pos positions should have hours added to them. Uh, I supported it then. I just want to understand, the, especially contracts, do we evaluate them on an annual basis to determine whether they should continue uh, with the same number of hours or maybe hours reduced, uh, et cetera. I just want to understand the process going forward. Forward. Um, Mr. CAO, can you give some? Sure, thank there? you, Worship. Um, this is uh, certainly, you know, kind of a, an, an abnormal number of contract positions that we, we've uh, included in the budget in terms of extending it for the full year in terms of the contract. Typically, what we've done in the past, and I would, I would suggest this is our plan moving forward, is uh, evaluate the contracts kind of throughout the year and then typically our process would be that at budget time and in the usual year uh, 
it's much sooner than, than this that we're coming forward with the second draft to council that we would make uh, recommendations at that point to either continue with a contract or, or uh, adjust and uh, perhaps go to a full-time permanent position or somewhere in between uh, kind of the two. So I guess the short answer is we will evaluate and we do evaluate throughout the year. And depending on the success uh, and or circumstances, we would make recommendations to council uh, during budget in extreme circumstances, it might be sooner than budget if, if there's a need or, uh, you know, something exists that we require to, but typically it would be during budget that we would make those uh, recommendations. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Wadivalkar. Thank you, Worship. I, I thank the CAO for his answer. I appreciate that. Um, if I may just ask uh, if those, if that evaluation could take place early in the budget. I find that when we get into the budget, we have many issues that we're discussing and sometimes some of these important ones may not get the attention that they deserve. So if we could look to have that conversation early in the budget process so that we can have a full uh, full discussion, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, CAO. Thank you, Worship. Um, great point uh, that Councillor Vadabankur has made. And certainly, I would suggest that our plan would be similar to what we've done this year as well as last year, which is the first budget meeting uh, is when the staffing positions would be discussed. And they would be discussed individually on their own merit with their own uh, report. So it's uh, it's certainly a great point that Councillor Vadabankur has raised and our intention is if not sooner than the first budget meeting, uh, it would be at the first budget meeting that we uh, discuss. Councilor uh, Vladimir, thank you, Your Worship. I just want to say thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilor Cummings. <laughs> thank you, Your Worship. Um, just a couple of questions uh, and a comment. Our community development fund um, <clears throat> seems to be taking a slippery slope here and going outside the guidelines. Uh, we have um, the Georgian Bay Hospital um, Hospital Fund. Um, we're looking at uh, the Georgian Bay recruitment, um, those types of things that are uh, outside our purview or outside our bailiwick. Um, but the other one is a, the one that I want to speak about and that's the Great Lakes membership. Apparently, we have a discount of 20% on it, but I really don't care about a discount of 20%. If our county, which is supposed to take some of the load off the municipalities, is a member of this group, I don't see why we should be a member as well. Okay, and maybe... Um, uh, Certainly, the deputy mayor can talk about it. Yeah, well, that's maybe what... We'll do with the Deputy Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Your Worship, and to Councillor Cummings. Uh, yes, the County of Simcoe is a member. Um, Wasaga Beach is a member, Collingwood and Tiny. And uh, the point that I would like to make is that we all have shoreline issues. Our priorities are different, but the group of us together can lobby for dollars. And hopefully having a membership to the Great Lakes City Initiatives is a bonus if dollars become available. So I, as I said, it requires strong lobbying and it's better that we're in it together. Tay Township is not a member at the moment, but they're going through the same thing that we are. We've all been down to our waterfront park these days and see the devastation that's happened. And if there was money available, it certainly would have been, be a big help. And I just feel that it would be a bonus having us all together. So that's my comeback, Councilor Cummings. Thank you. Uh, further comments, uh, Councilor Levy. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I agree with Councilor Cummings on all the points he made. I don't think it's necessary for us to join uh, this organization uh, since county represents us 
And uh, as for the Community Development Fund, uh, when I requested many, many years ago that that fund be implemented, it was in order to uh, promote and uh, enable future growth and development. It was never meant as a slush fund uh, for other things, which it now has become. So I just, uh, I guess moving forward, my ask would be that uh, we clarify the purpose of that fund. I know I'm off topic, but since Brian mentioned it, we really need to understand what that fund is for and that we utilize it appropriately and not just use it for every little thing that comes up that we want to fund. End of rant. Thank you. <laughs> you. Um, okay, Council Cummings. Thank you, Worship. Just, um, just to further that thing on the Great Lakes, um, I have never seen a report come from anywhere in the Great Lakes. This, uh, this yes. firm is out of Chicago. Uh, most of the meetings are held down there. Um, our warden is a member of that particular group. And uh, we haven't heard anything about it. When, when the lake waters were low, we never heard a thing from them. Um, and I'm just, just wondering how our membership is worth anything if we're not going to get a say. Um, Deputy Mayor. Well, I would disagree with you. We do have a say, and if we are a member, we have more of a say. It's not just the county. As I said, Wasaga Beach is involved, Collingwood, all of these. Maybe we're not getting the information because we're not a member. Uh, <laughs> Council for the Volunteer, would you have any comment on that since uh, Wasaga <laughs> Beach is uh, a member? Thank you, Worship. Um, I can say that Wasaga Beach has been an off and on member. It's currently an on member. Uh, it was certainly something that um, former Mayor Cal Patterson was, was interested in, uh, felt that there were uh, discussion points that uh, this organization was getting involved with that pertain to the overall uh, um, health of the Great Lakes. And Wasaga Beach having uh, the longest freshwater beach was very interested in ensuring the health of the of the Great Lakes. Now the conference, uh, the conferences and the meetings, they're they have been held in the states, but they've also been held in in Ontario and in Quebec. Um, so there is information that comes back to the communities that are that are members, but it's it's a very broad organization representing a number of communities around the Great Lakes, and they're their mandate is the overall environmental health of the, of the Great Lakes. So uh, communities like Collingwood, Wasaga Beach, those that um, are, um, are on, the, on the Great Lakes certainly have been very much a participant. Uh, Wasaga Beach for the last, I would say, um, I would say the last four years, five years at least has been a member. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rose, I think it's saw your card, yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, over a number of years that we have participated and been a member, and then there's been years where we haven't been a member. And uh, I'm a little more with Councillor Cummings on this, is that uh, I don't remember us ever hearing or getting any good information. Uh, I think part of it is, it's not that they're probably not a good organization, is that we have such a small waterfront uh, portion of the Great Lakes as compared to a lot of the bigger municipalities. So I, I don't believe it's good value for our money uh, to be participating. Okay, anyone else have any further comments on this matter? So Councillor Cummings, are you prepared to put forward a motion that it be removed? I am, Your Worship. Okay. Well, you put your motion forward that, that uh, the Great Lakes uh, portion be removed from the budget. Do you have a seconder? <laughs> Councillor Levy. Okay. And so... I guess I would call the vote as 
four. All those opposed? One, two, three, four, five. So it remains. Okay, anything further in regards to questions, concerns uh, on, on this budget? Councillor LaRose. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I was just wondering if we could deal with the uh, bylaw and planning contracts separately. The, the bylaw and what? And the plan, junior planning contract separately. I don't follow what that is. Uh, Stacey? Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Councilor Rose. I think what you're, you're talking about is, again, you want to have the discussion about whether or not this be included or not included into the budget? Correct. Okay. So I think under this, this, um, this straight motion that we have is basically Council's considering adopting the budget as it was presented at the second time from the amendments made. And so what we've had now is two motions to ch change it. So we would continue down that path. So if there's something you want to change, you would move a motion to head, you would get a seconder, there would be a discussion, there would be a vote, and then we would move on to the next day. So sep separately it's fine because that's essentially what we're doing. It just based on each member's uh, moving of a motion to make those changes. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So if you want to do something, you move a motion to, to do it. And if you get a seconder, it gets put on the floor, it gets discussed, and then the mayor can call for the vote. And if it gets removed, it's, it's on the carrying of that motion. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bede Bonker, I saw your card up there for... Councillor Bede Bonker? Yeah. Sorry, my mute button wasn't coming on there for a second. So I think what Councillor Rose is getting at is he'd like to split out these two positions, vote on those two positions independently of the rest of the budget, and then vote on the budget. But that's for him to clarify. I think that's what he was trying to get at, but that's uh, he needs to clarify that. That's very, very much the way I was looking at it. I have three left, uh, Your Worship, if that's all right with you. Uh, if we could start with the junior, junior planning contract, uh, as it was explained earlier that it would be an early review long before budget time for next year, uh, I would move that we move forward with that for the remaining dollars uh, to fill out that one to a full year. Okay, you got a seconder? Yeah. I will. Uh, I see our treasurer has uh, her hand up there. Carrie? Just a question of, of clar for clarity. Um, so at the last meeting, um, we were given direction to include the, those uh, positions and the funding allocation for them. So they are included in the budget. So sorry, I'm just not clear on what this motion particularly is. Nope, that's fine. That It's great if it stays in. I'm, I'm fine with that one then. We'll forget that one. If we could, Your Worship, do the bylaw one. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that it be removed. I'd like the part-time hours to stay as they are. I, I don't think that there is uh, a need uh, to have the extra hours uh, right now. I don't think our uh, the size of our community warrants it, so I would like to uh, see it stay as it is with the allotted part-time hours that currently exist. Now, again, um, Madam Treasurer, was it not also included in the last review of the budget? So, yes, it was I, included for an entire year, Your Worship, and I'd rather have it stay just as it is as a, uh, a part-time contract. Yes, so I can clarify that in terms of promotion. So what I think, think where the confusion lies is part-time. It was changed to full-time in the last meeting. Now, now Councillor LaRose is saying he'd like it to go back to part-time. So my suggestion is that Councillor Rose is moving a motion that the bylaw position be reduced 
part-time hours. Because again, it's going back because it was included as full-time. Right. Is and that, that right? is correct. Okay. Okay, so Councillor LaRose, you're making a motion that it be go back to part-time. Um, so that's fine. And uh, do you have a seconder for that? Councillor Cummings? And is there any further discussion on this matter? Also, Buddy Mulcair. Thank you. And, and uh, I spoke to this a little bit earlier, and I thought that uh, the, the presentation that was made at our last meeting was quite compelling, and that's why I supported moving it from a part time to full time. Um, I, I think there is sufficient work. Uh, within our municipal law enforcement to keep two people um, busy. Um, Councillor Cummings and I have had conversations at our section meeting over the year about various aspects of bylaw enforcement. I think with uh, some additional resources, at least we could try it this year to see if that will have an impact in terms of uh, service levels within our, within our community. In addition, there's um, a couple of bylaws that uh, I'll be speaking to tomorrow evening at, um, at Committee of the Whole that uh, I'm going to be asking that they be included in the work plan for review. That's going to take some time. So I think there's some merit there. I'm not I'm not convinced that it uh, should continue on a, on, a, on a sustainable basis, but for this year, I would be prepared to support it. Okay, thank you, Councilor Wadimontar. And uh, I have to concur that I, right at the moment, am of the same opinion. So, uh, Councilor Rose. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I, I just don't understand or see where this was coming from. We've uh, nothing in our town has changed population wise, size wise, stuff like that, basically for the last 10 years. Uh, I watched a report yesterday out of the city of Barrie. They're thinking of adding one full time one, and it'll be their first ad in 17 years. So when you look at how much the city of Barrie has grown over the last 17 years, and when I look at our population hasn't changed, the amount of residents, houses hasn't changed any more than just a little bit, I don't understand what would warrant another full-time person. It just makes absolutely no sense to me. Disagree. Yeah. I, I, you state, Councillor LaRose, that Barry's just added one, but then on the other hand, what's the total number of their bylaw employees or employees for the city of Barry? Well, I'm, I'm sure when you do it by population, it would even be worse, but if they haven't had to change in 17 years, I, I, I just don't understand what's changed in our... Uh, well, I, I can't see what's changed. One thing that I did uh, certainly note uh, over the summer months and uh, with the COVID uh, is uh, having that second person sure made a difference in uh, being able to enforce bylaw and, and, and uh, look into bylaw and, and doing things that were required and needed in that department over and above having one person is that when we were looking at having it stretched over seven days a week that we were able to do the split and uh, it, it was entirely a different thing. So, uh, Mr. CIO, would you have any comments on, on this? Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I, maybe I'll just add a couple comments and then my suggestion to you would be if, if committee would like to hear from Andrea, the Director of Planning and Development, perhaps that might uh, provide some information to council uh, just to further support the ask and then at the end of the day, ultimately, it's it's committee's decision. Just a couple of things, I guess. Certainly over my time here, bylaw enforcement has continued to receive greater and greater attention. Uh, certainly, I think the model we currently work under is more of a reactive model than a proactive model. The hope and the goal is that we can certainly take more of a proactive approach with uh, with bylaw enforcement. 
there is uh, certainly COVID uh, and the situation has not, um, has not provided additional free time for our current resources that we have. And certainly it's, it's been found beneficial having that additional body in the, the portion of the year. The other thing, maybe I'll just clarify for council and, and uh, I believe in a, you know, certainly in conversations with our CAO group, uh, there's, you know, a number of municipalities in, in kind of offline conversations I've had that are considering the same, uh, the same asks in terms of increasing bylaw enforcement resources. My understanding, and I, I stand to be corrected if, if I am wrong, but my understanding that Barry is actually asking for four bylaw officers, not one. Uh, and and Councillor LaRose is correct. It's been 17 years, I believe, since they've added to their complement. And I think they're staggering those four officers over the next, I think the last officer will be added at the end of 2022. Um, but my, I guess my point is, I think we need to look at our own situation. I think my own, my own belief is we've been under resourced in bylaw enforcement uh, for quite some time. And I think it's, it's time that we give this a try. It, 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 it was proposed as a contract for a reason so that we have an opportunity to reassess. And at the end of the day, council can make some decisions kind of, you know, in, Q, in Q3, let's say, the early part of Q3 in, in 2021. Mr. Mayor, I don't know if, if Andrea, Director of Planning and Development has anything to add, if you'd like to ask her or if you'd like to continue on the conversation with committee. No, I, I think it would be a good thing if, if Andrea uh, has something to add. Andrea? Yeah, thank you very much, Your Worship and members of council. Um, I, I really do believe that the bylaw enforcement position, uh, expanding that contract is important, um, a benefit to the community. Definitely COVID has seen an increase in calls, um, expectations around the town's role in calls and how we can help and assist the community. So there's a lot of communications as well as in the bylaw role, not just the enforcement aspect of it. Um, so there's definitely um, opportunities for the bylaw to take a, a stronger role in proactive enforcement as well. Um, I think the, the staff report talks to the volume of calls um, and how, um, uh, sorry, as I said, like the, the complexity and the expectations of the public during COVID has been that uh, the, the municipality is going to be there to respond. Sorry, I was uh, going to mention too that we have made a couple of changes recently. We, we updated the property standard by law that does add or expand the municipal's role, municipality's role that where we previously hadn't been. I'll go back to mold and bed bugs. Um, those are two big ones in our community. I think that's, that the municipality is going to be tasked with. Um, I can say we've already been tasked or looked at trees. We've been asked under our new property standards to look at trees. So. With our new property standards bylaw, there will be a, an increased role uh, the town will have to play in municipal law enforcement. So uh, for those reasons and for expanding the contract for one year, I think it's it's a good uh, trial for the town to take on. Thank you, Andrea. Um, do our, we have any further comments, concerns, questions on this now? Okay, there are none. So Councillor LaRose, you're prepared to make that motion? I believe we have a, a mover and inspector to we already did make it. Yeah. We did, and uh, okay. So you're. What, could you uh, read the motion, uh, Deputy, or maybe Madam Clerk? I think we settled on uh, that the bylaw of the bylaw law enforcement powers used to part time. Okay. All those in favor. Three, all those opposed. Six. So it stays. Okay, moving on. Uh, did you uh, have any other motions that you wish to put forward, Councillor Rose? Yes. Go ahead, Councillor Rose. Thank you, Your Worship. The only other one was our uh, RCS attendant. I just wondered if we were going to fill that as a full-time position, would we be taking away any of the existing part-time hours that have been allocated? Uh, that would probably be answered by Sherry, our Director of Recreation. Sherry?
Thank you. Uh, through to Councillor uh, LaRose, uh, we were going to, once the COVID um, is complete, there are the additional hours that Council has approved, uh, we would uh, remove from the budget, um, but they're permanently in the, if you're looking at permanent, uh, in the uh, arena staffing complement, there are two part-time facility attendants at 20 hours a week each. And uh, we would be looking at, we have no direction from council to remove those at, the, at this point in time. So what has, was proposed, I believe is budgeted in addition to those pieces. I'm not sure if I answered your question. No, oh, that, uh, that does answer. And I'm just wondering, since we'll be adding 2,080 hours more uh, in the upcoming year, uh, we should at least be getting a report back saying that we should be able to reduce some of the part-time hours. I don't think we just need to add a full 2,080 hours to the budget without taking away some of our part-time. Uh, Kerry, Chair, I mean, Sherry, do you have a response to what the Councillor Rose has just mentioned? Um, I guess I look for further direction from Council. If they want a staff report um, on the financial impacts, I can certainly um, draft one for the next, uh, next budget uh, meeting. Uh... Uh, let me go to uh, our treasurer, Kerry. Yes, certainly that's, um, you know, a direction um, for council to consider. Um, what I can tell you right now, as far as the current, the current status of our 2021 budget. So currently and sherry can probably correct me if i'm if i'm not uh, recalling this correctly but currently we have due to covid we do have uh, additional facility attendant hours um, approved up until the end of uh, the 2021 ice season so march uh, at some point um, the request last month was to keep some of those facility attendant hours for the 21-22 ice season starting in September. And that was what turned into the full-time facility operator. So those hours for September to December will not be asked for or included in the budget. But there, there are two positions that are currently completing their facility attendant hours at the arena until the end of this ice season in March. Is it, that's correct, Sherry? Yes, that's correct. Um, so, that, so that's what's in the budget right now. Yes. Um, but not those additional hours that originally she was seeking um, to bring those facility attendant hours back in September to December of 20. That's correct. Okay, so with that, Councillor Rose, um, again, uh, do you feel that uh, going forward or moving forward with the possibility of a full time operator uh, at American Culture is not? Um, well, no, Your Worship, I thought it was a, was an okay move, and I understand it. I'm just wondering, just to make sure that everybody is aware, we're adding 2,080 new, brand new hours to that department. So I was seeing uh, the ones for COVID, you know, we have to have that. I understand that, and we've already approved that in, in previous times. But with, with adding a full-time person that does all of the duties, I'm just wondering whether our two regular part-time uh, hours are still required. Okay. Councilor Vladimir, did I see your card up? Uh, yes. Uh, 
Hey, Your Worship, I wasn't sure if the director was going to respond to that uh, that question or if she'd already responded. Um, so, if if council's looking for my my opinion without a staff report, then yes, absolutely, I would think that those attendants are still required. Um, you know, we spoke to the last meeting, we spoke to the shoulder season um, and the ability for uh, facility operators to attend to something in the park. Uh, the facility attendants also provide the opportunity to have a um, to have a body at the arena when we just physically need a need a body for somebody else to, to run out which is a more economical uh, having another uh, facility attendant or another full-time operator um, to, to fill those, you know, high priority times or whatnot, and then look at overtime and, and those pieces. So um, it, it certainly gives us some flexibility that way to make some more, like I say, economical choices uh, when additional help um, is needed at the arena. The other piece that just with respect to COVID currently, um, council did approve just some information from council for council's benefit. Uh, council did approve the addition of 80 uh, facility attendant hours to assist with COVID. We haven't staffed the arena at that full extra capacity at this time because if council will re recall, we were looking at phasing in um, our ice rentals and whatnot, but because we haven't, uh, the progression of the pandemic and as that's progressing, we haven't fully increased all of our facility rentals at this time, so we haven't used that additional uh, staffing as well. So just for council's uh, awareness. Okay. So, Councillor Rose, are you good with that? Okay. So that is going to remain. Oh, Councillor Wedemoncare, did you have a further comment? I do. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I was just giving the director an opportunity to respond to Councillor Rose's question. And as we talked a couple of weeks ago, I think with COVID, um, there's a lot of variables that are now into the mix, and I think that'll that'll shake out as as we move through 2021. And I think the director, in looking at her staffing and her scheduling and whatnot, will develop a scheduling plan integrating the new facility operator into the into that into the facility into the parks. And at the end of the day, uh, some part-time hours may shake out, but. Uh, I have full confidence in our director of working through this. Oh, lost it. Sorry, we'll learn more as the as the season progresses and things uh, stabilize. So um, I'm in support of this and I continue to be so. Very good, thank you. So that uh, covers that. Does anyone else have anything else that they want to bring forward? Councillor Cummings. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, one thing that was added to this draft of the budget, uh, and maybe most of council were at the public budget meeting. However, I'd like the uh, treasurer or Andrea Betty to uh, respond to the transfer to the attainable housing reserve that we've put in there of ten thousand dollars. See, I believe the treasurer could probably respond to that, Terry. I think I will uh, defer that question to uh, Director of Planning, Andrea. Okay, thank you, Andrea. I see Jeff is on screen there, so you're getting some help, I guess. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, Your Worship, and, and Jeff I can happily join in, but I, I think this was um, something that we did have a discussion about internally and uh, from a planning and development, looked at our strategic plan and looked at maybe something we could add to the budget. So um, with that, it was something that was, uh, I think identified in, as being part of our strategic plan and uh, space for it. So potentially Jeff could fill in some of those details. Okay, Mr. CAO. Through you, Mr. Chair, I think Andrea has done a good job at articulating kind of what I was gonna suggest, but it was mentioned uh, at our last, uh, at our first budget meeting with committee a couple of weeks ago. It is a priority that we heard loud and clear from council as well as the public uh, during our strategic plan process. It's one of, as council knows, one of our six pillars, one of our six strategic goals that uh, council has uh, made a commitment to. 
this is an opportunity for us to put some money aside and give staff an opportunity to kind of come up with a game plan and be back in front of council with what that game plan looks like um, while recognizing that <clears throat> it's important that, you know, as a lower tier municipality, we stay in our lane. Uh, we all know that housing is a responsibility of the County of Simcoe and certainly our intent here is not to deviate and exit our lane. Um, but certainly we know that uh, there's been a lot of success stories with other lower tier municipalities uh, entering the, the sandbox and playing a support role uh, to further advance uh, housing opportunities within their communities. So, you know, we don't know precisely what, uh, what this 10,000 is going to be used for, but it's certainly a start and certainly I think an opportunity that you know, we want to get back in front of council in 2021 so we can start uh, making some headway with that, uh, with that attainable housing priority in our strategic plan. So hopefully that, that kind of gives a bit of an overview. And as I said, Andrea did a good job at articulating what uh, kind of what the intent is there. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cummings, does that uh, answer your question? Yeah, it certainly does. Thank you. Anything further on the budget? Councillor LaRose. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to Carrie and her staff and all the senior staff that worked on this. Uh, as, as some of us that have been around for a while remember, this used to take weeks and weeks and months and start early. Uh, starting basically with the uh, draft number three, we've moved along to draft number four with only a half a dozen uh, issues. Uh, just glad to see that uh, we're this far ahead and we're keeping it somewhat under control. I just wanted to remind council that when we look at these contract positions, again, they're going to have to be very, very, very scrutinized in the upcoming one for next year. Remember, our population hasn't grown, our amount of the size of the town hasn't grown, and we've already added four people with our communications person. So uh, you kind of wonder, what are we doing here with a, with a whole lot of extra people that uh, maybe not be required? But other than that, uh, you know, very good, very uh, well done. Thank you, Councillor Rose. And uh, I guess I, I could point out that uh, when you mentioned that they all have The well and uh, scrutiny indicated, I think, that we could be looking at reports on both of those or all uh, three of them uh, mm -hmm. uh, and prior to the actual completion or budget and whatever. Um, now, this, uh, and, and uh, thank you for the remarks, and yes, our, our uh, whole team has worked very hard on this, and so has council mm -hmm. with their input and so forth. Uh, I'm looking at thinking that. Uh, nothing has changed. We've maintained the 1.5 uh, and uh, there's nothing has changed on, on, on this whole budget report and I'm wondering if council would agree that there would be no need for a January meeting of budget meeting and that perhaps we could even look at our council meeting in January to ratify and pass this budget. Very well. Yes. Yes. How many yeses? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay. So, budget uh, reviews then uh, council and staff are, are done, are finished, and, uh, and it's been a great, great piece of work and I'm very pleased that, you know, we were able to send that out to have our staff uh, and mm, come back with a 1.5. We were at 1.4. We made the changes and added the changes that we wanted and that are there, that yes, some will have to be reviewed, but I think all in all, it's a real good budget. And bearing in mind that uh, with the county at zero, we're still gonna come zero or less. So um, great work. And uh, we'll uh, make sure that uh, in, in January, rather than a budget meeting, we'll ratify the budget. Uh, Councillor Cummings. Thank you, Worship. Just one last comment. Um, we have one item in the budget that uh, uh, will be brought forward tomorrow night at our meeting, uh, and it has yet to be passed, whether we will be uh, 
approving the ten thousand dollar grant from Cultural Alliance or not. Uh, that'll that'll be dependent on what happens, but it won't affect our tax rates though. So. Uh, yeah, exactly, Councillor Cummings. You pointed out that it's uh, it's not going to be a taxation rate item, so we should still be good. Uh, see, our Madame Clerk has her hand up. Stacy. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so we have a motion here, um, and it sounds like what you're looking to do is amend that slightly based on uh, the conversation you just had with Council, um, and you have that draft number four 2021 budget report and related budget documents be received for information and discussion which we've done and assuming that this is the motion the way you would like the motion amended but please uh please correct me if i'm wrong and that the and that staff bring forward the final 2021 budget to the january 2021 council meeting for approval exactly thank you and so we'll need mover seconder uh okay. vote well, maybe I'll get the mover and the seconder both from finance. Councilor Valdemar and Councilor Cummings. They were going to move in second. Yes, yes. Okay. So we're good. It's um, done. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Did you take? Did you call for the vote on that item? Yes, uh, I certainly did. Uh, I, I saw that it was unanimous. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So with that, members of council, thank you very much. And we'll see you tomorrow evening for council meeting and council of the whole and special council meeting again. So been a busy few days. Everyone have a good night.